So, another welcome. And I'm going to get down in your space now. So, my name is Miguel Martinez Sines. I'm the provost. Everybody know what a provost is? <laughs> I need some help on that. Anybody? No? All right, how many philosophers have we got in the house? Not you over there. <laughs> how many philosophers? You going to study philosophy? You going to study philosophy? You're not. She's saying no. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> just for the record, for those of you who are upstairs, she's just shaking her head. So. Why not? Why not? I'm going to stay here until you. <laughs> Response right now, she said, because. Because <laughs> why? Come on, who's going to study philosophy? Don't look down, that's bad right there. My brother really looked down. You can't look down. So I'm going to try to give you some lessons. This is going to happen in your classroom space. So once you look away, I'm going to pick on you, right? So it's a guarantee if you look away, I pick on you. It's not a guarantee if you make eye contact, I won't pick on you. But that you know works. So you're going to study philosophy? Why not? He said no, just so we're clear. Uh, I'm going to give you the microphone so you can do what you did. All right, so I said, are you going to study philosophy? And he said no. No, he was like fat. No. Nope. All right. <laughs> Why not? You don't like philosophy. Oh, God. Andrew, where's Andrew? Andrew, brother, he doesn't like philosophy. What's philosophy anyway? <laughs> Listen, man, you can't say you don't like philosophy, and then I say, what's philosophy? And you say, it's a good question. And I, you don't like I mean, you can't, that's not how it works. So that's like my kids, I don't want to rock me. Don't no, rock me, don't rock me. What, I mean, so why not philosophy? You, you guess you don't know. All right, so I'm going to make four points. I want you to stay on track. Number one is keep an open mind. If you don't know what philosophy is, you shouldn't say you don't want it. This is a critical piece. You're going to get access to things that you've never heard about. Philosophy is one of them. There's a deadly space to be in the front row, isn't it? <laughs> Blood pressure goes up. <laughs> so this is, again, first point, keep an open mind. You don't have any idea what's going to happen. There's a lot of things that somebody's going to say, why don't you try this and I don't like it. Like my man over there, and then when somebody says, what is it you don't really know? So if you don't know, you can't possibly know you don't like it. Right, so this is a critical piece. Keep an open mind. I'll make four points. All right, are y'all keeping track? All right, what's the first point? What's the first point? All right, just make sure we're here. Keep an open mind. Is he right? Yeah, yeah that's an easy one. When I get to number four, it's going to be a little tricky. <laughs> All right, keep an open mind. That's cool. There was a food. There was a food. There was a food. There was a food. See? A food. Food one of my kind. No, food one of my kind. Oh, I can do with a food. There was a food one. I can do with a food one. I can do with a food one. I can do with a food one. See?
y'all a question. Do you think that person likes his job? Yeah, yeah right? I mean, there's no question. How do you get that fired up? Right? You got to turn the volume down when I'm stinking it when I'm at work. You're stinking it. You got to turn it down because he gets so excited that you're like, oh, something's happening, something's happening, right? Or number two, find something you're that passionate about. Find something that drives you like that, that when you wake up in the morning, you are ready to go watch a soccer match to, to be the broadcaster. We got some privileges. Most of the people on the planet don't have the opportunity that you have. And that's to be able to choose to do with your lives what you want to do with your lives. With that privilege comes unbelievable responsibility. There's a lot of folks that have sacrificed for you to be in this space. You owe them. You have to find out what you're passionate about. If you're not passionate, you're not going to get out of life what you want to get out. There's a question we always like to wrestle with. Is there life after death? All right, that's the question. So maybe ask themselves that question, is there life after death? Only one person. <laughs> <laughs> Two people. Damn, right? When four folks, their hands are going up. All right, I'm going to tell you that the fundamental question you've been asking yourself, is there life before death? Because when you choose not to find what you're passionate about, you're suggesting that there isn't life before you. So I urge you, find that. That's point number two, ready? So I've made two points. Are y'all staying? Are you staying? Don't look down. You look down. Yeah, no, you did. You look down. All right, what are the two points? Okay, keep it on mind. Find something you're passionate about. Cool? Everybody, everybody on the same page? I said there were four points, so I've got to figure out what's the third one. <laughs> there wasn't really four points. I'm kidding. <laughs> we always say that when we're trying to scream before we're going to say it. The habits that you form aren't going to necessarily serve you well in this environment. We're going to push at you differently. What I'm doing right now is modeling what's going to happen in some of your classrooms. You're going to have to be ready to go. You're going to have to be ready, as Denise said, to engage. You're going to have to be engaged so you can learn. One of the things that people say a lot, have you ever heard the expression, kids are sponges? Have you ever heard that? Kids are sponges? Yeah, what does that mean? That was good. You made eye, she's like, I need eye contact. You shouldn't be calling me. What does that mean? They absorb everything. They absorb everything they're told. Why do they do that? Oh, that was cold. She said they don't know any better. <laughs> I'll tell you what, first, my kids don't absorb everything they're told. But that's okay. But right, there's an ocean, right? But what, what is the critical piece for kids? They're hyper aware. They're taking everything in. So I'm going to give you an example. If I put a big box up there, right there by the president, and it had a big bow on it, this is what would happen. If I brought in uh, your, this crew right here, I brought y'all in, right? Most of you would come in and do something like this. Let's just pretend you were going. You'd be like, come in and put a box up there. And it, you'd sit down, right? What would happen if I brought in a bunch of five-year-olds? <laughs> that box would be torn up. Somebody would be out there going, what in the world is in that box, right? Because they're curious, they're hyper-curious to figure it out. We were all at that point, and I'm talking about everybody, I'm not just talking about you. What I'm suggesting you do is, again, back to the passion, but also ignite. What's that thing that gets you curious? And recognize that some of the habits you formed over the last number of years are going to have to be modified for you to be successful, for you to flourish. It's critical. So, three points, right? That last one's kind of fuzzy, isn't it? This is kind of bad because I feel bad for y'all. Y'all don't try to get up here, but how you doing up here? Doing well. You doing well? Yes. Really? Do you know the three points? What? <laughs>
find something you're passionate about and keep that curiosity of a five-year-old. <laughs> <laughs>
Send them to our space, and then we'll figure out how to get them to type real. All right, is that cool? Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Welcome. Have fun. 